Hey, Faye Hollands here and welcome to episode 42 of the Busy Business Women podcast. And it's my first episode back after my trip to Fiji. I'm super excited about getting stuck in to podcasting and talking to the lovely lady on your screen. If you are watching the video, you'll be able to see Amy Wyhoon on your screen right now. Give us a wave, Amy. Hello, hello. And today we are talking all things social media with Amy, who is the founder and owner of Sugar Pop Social. I love that name <laughs> and has been helping clients in digital marketing for the past three years. Now, Amy, like many of us, has a real passion for food, coffee, and social media. What a good combination, hey? Yeah. <laughs> and while she was employed as a social media manager, she built up a following on Instagram, sharing her foodie adventures, which I will link to in the show notes, because whilst it's not got anything to do with sugar pop social, she does walk her talk, and she's got an amazing Instagram page. So I'll link to that in the show notes, and I'll give you the, the uh, link to that later on. So she soon realized that there are lots of businesses out there trying to market themselves without really knowing how to do it well. And she knew that she could help them really establish a strong social media presence. So Sugar Pop Social was born and we're very glad it was. Now, Amy loves helping businesses connect with their customers on social media, uh, on platforms like Facebook and Instagram, and is an absolute expert when it comes to auditing social accounts, setting up effective social media strategies, along with creating content that pops. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome Amy Wyhoon from Sugar Pop Social onto the podcast today. Welcome, lovely lady. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You are very, very welcome. We've just established that it's Amy's first podcast today, which I am just so happy about because I know you're probably terrified. Yeah. We've had so <laughs> many business owners on the podcast where this is their first ever podcast interview. And I, personally being selfish, am very, very pleased to be the first one to nab you because you're awesome and I'm stoked that you're here. So you. without further ado, let's get stuck in because as always, I've got a massive collection of questions that I want to ask you. This is my opportunity to to kind of wring out all the goodness from you and your business brain, and I tend to do that. So let's get stuck in. Now, you've been running Sugar Pop Social for the last three years, which is awesome. Can you just tell us a bit about what did you do before that, and how did you end up being your own boss? Yeah, sure. So uh, after kids, I needed to get back into the workforce and ended up back in hospitality. So I thought you were going to say hospital then. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> okay. no cafes. So from the Good. cafes, I um was working at one place and they really needed some marketing. And I just said, we need to get on socials. We need to be marketing on Facebook and Instagram. And then while I was on Instagram, I discovered all these foodies and they were going out to all the cafes and promoting them. So that's sort of how in between desserts came about as well. Oh. But I was also managing their um, Instagram and Facebook page while doing that. And okay. I in turn did a good job and Basically, the owner of that business had a few other places and I started managing all of them. So it just grew. And how nice that you, you know, this, this business, business organically happened through something that you love doing that you were just yeah. doing personally um, beforehand, right? Yeah, so just give us a plug again on your page because if people are sitting there itching to go to your page before going to the show notes, what's the inter Instagram handle for your foodie adventures? Oh, it's in between desserts. All yeah. <laughs> and can I just say a disclaimer here, if you're listening to this podcast or watching the video and you are trying to lose weight, diet, yeah. um, or just not eat really delicious high calorie food, probably don't go and look at that right now because <laughs> my mouth is watering just thinking about it. It's awesome. Right. So well, I'm really pleased that you had that adventure and came to be a, a business owner, which is awesome. So you're still relatively, you know, you're still in the relatively early stages of being a business owner, but you have also made it a lot further than so many other business owners do, which is awesome. What are the standout kind of problems or challenges you've had to overcome to make it this far? Um, yeah, so it's been obviously a bit of a journey with a few pivots along the way. Mm -hmm. um, but I really think that it came down to realizing that what I had and the knowledge that I knew was actually valuable and then treating it like a business. So um, I suppose just, yeah, like a lot of people would often come to me and I want to pick your brain. Can we have a coffee? Oh. You know, <laughs> oh, don't even get me started on that topic. I will. I'll get my ranty pants on in a moment, but you, you finish first. Um, and then, yeah, so I just realized that people actually wanted to know how I was doing things. And I realized that I had something that could help people. 
So let's talk about that challenge then, because you brought up something that, you know, you saw and heard my reaction. And I know that I'm sure that you feel the same as many of our listeners will. That whole thing where someone says, can I pick your brain? Um, Which I don't think people do that thinking about the ramifications or actually how rude it is really when you think about the crux of it. So just to give my thoughts on this, you know, I'm 12 years in business as a service-based business. I've had people saying that to me for a very, very long time now. And I I still had it happen last week. Um, But I have a very different reaction now to I used to. And in the early stage of my business, I would think, yeah, sure, pick my brain. Let's have a conversation of coffee. That'll probably lead to client and money and how awesome. But it's the wrong angle that people come from. So they do literally want to pick your brain. They want to take your IP, the thing you are selling, and have it for free to benefit their life, their business. Um, And it sounds very cold and harsh and brutal, but that's the crux of it, right? So do you still find that happens? Because I reckon you do. And how do you manage that? Do you feel like you're nailing being able to push back on those brain pickers or is that still a kind of kill his heel for you? Oh, look, I'm definitely getting better at it. Um, I've set up, I suppose, ways to sort of work around it and, you know, offer them a package or something that I do, a strategy session, an hour conversation. So I have like some ways, depending on what it is that they're asking. Um, And I also have a free group, like Facebook group that people can go into and ask questions there. But I know that they're there to um, learn and to work on their business. They're not just asking me how to do things to start their own social media business up. Yeah, yes, because there's that other thing, isn't there? Yeah. There's people wanting to, you know, like us talking about your skills in the context of our different businesses. But then you do have people that want to know how did you set up your business yep. and how can they do exactly the same as you? <laughs> yes. Very rude. <laughs> now, on that note, because you just mentioned it and it's great timing, what's your Facebook group called? Because I think that most of my listeners will want to go along and hang out. Yep. With. Sure, come and join us. It's Make Your Social Media Pop make your social media pop. I love it. I love the word pop. And again, it will be a link in the show notes listeners. So you don't have to write it down right now. Okay. You brought brought up a great point there. I'm going to take my ranty pants off for the moment. But thank you for bringing that one up. All right. So I love to dip into hindsight because hindsight's a wonderful thing. So if you were to wipe the slate clean and start your business from scratch today, what would you do differently? I think I'd have structures set up from the, like from the start, have packages, um, that people could come into from day one rather than like sort of navigating through it, um, learning all the um, ways that people will take advantage of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and just eliminating that and sort of, I suppose, being more confident in what I do that it is val- it, well, it was back then, it still is now. Absolutely, yeah. But like actually new information that people didn't know and they wanted to know it. And I suppose at the start, you don't realize how much you know until, Uh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I agree with you. It's a a tricky one, right? Because I think um, in a service-based business, when whatever point you start your business, you're coming into that point with a a bag of expertise, right? And then you, you grow and build. So in your three years, you've added a lot to tools to that toolkit that you have and we can then feel like the base level is higher than it actually is so we tend to we can end up underestimating undervaluing those more basic skills that we've had for a long time but other people don't have at all so I get what you're saying about kind of not really um, necessarily valuing or putting a price on maybe the more basic things that you knew that your clients just lap up like it's the best thing they've ever heard (laughs) Yeah. Now talk to me more about structure. You said that that was a bit of a a challenge at the start. I had a client say to me recently that she, or somebody that became a client, but before we were speaking, she said she felt like she was flying the plane while she was building it, which I just loved that phrase and I can relate to. Does that resonate with you? Is that something that you felt that you were doing at the start? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I suppose like at the start, I didn't really know how to package anything. I didn't know Um, what value I should be putting on my services. Um, So I was probably definitely undercharging, over-delivering. I think all the usual things that you do when you start out just to try and get a client Um, and you sort of chase the client rather than, you know, having a set structure and the clients will come. 
Um, yeah. Well, with a little bit of work, but you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Completely. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's very easy to, at the start, be kind of led by clients as well. So they're looking for us to take the reins and to hold their hands and give them direction in a service-based business. But when you're new and eager and keen, we can often end up doing it the other way around where we're trying to mold ourselves into what the client needs. So they say yes to us or mold Absolutely. these packages or offers. So you find you're sending out an email and I know I used to do it in the in the early st- in the early stages and when I say early stages like I'm actually talking about a good probably five years and under it wasn't like the first month or so I was still finding my way many years later but you're you know I was recreating options for different people all the time like everything I was doing was bespoke which was this insane and and it was very time consuming um, and then you do have those situations where you realize you massively undervalued yourself you spent way more time with that client than you charged for you know there's so many learning experiences and I suppose sometimes you've got to go through that pain to realize the error of our ways and and change what we're doing but I love that you've brought that up as hindsight because I think and I know there's a lot you can do to avoid that it's just you know sometimes we've trodden the more difficult path and you and I have both done that so listeners listen up if you're in the early stages like under five years or so or for those of you that might be in business a lot longer but haven't nailed your packages yet come and and chat to me or drop me a line um, and let me help you with that because you don't need to be going through that costly experience that you know Amy and I have certainly done over time so thank you for bringing that up okay so let's get stuck into your your guru space social media right you work in a space that is constantly evolving and changing much to the you know unhappiness of most of us because just when we think we've got to grips with something you know Instagram will bring some new development out or something will change and so we don't know where we're at and for you to run a successful business it's critical that you're up to speed with all of those latest developments how do you manage to stay on top of all the changes that happen in your industry all of the time (laughs) good question that's difficult (laughs) Um, yeah, you've got to love it that there is always something new popping up. Yeah. Um, but I so far have been able to, from groups that I'm in, masterminds, um, just following like the Instagram and Facebook businesses, um, getting all their newsletters, following some of the social media um, people that like, yeah, that get the news sort of direct and yeah, they've obviously got the big businesses. Um, they often have like the news out when it's Mm -hmm. breaking um and then just yeah trialing and testing the features to see what is and what isn't working because obviously what works for one doesn't necessarily work for everyone and instagram's just great because everybody does actually have slightly different accounts yeah so um it is just knowing how they all work so yeah just trialing it testing it and yeah just absorbing all that information that's out there on the different platforms so you just said something very interesting then when i've gone oh really so you said everybody has different accounts now i know there's kind of personal and there's business but are there more so there's three different types of accounts you can have on instagram there's personal Mm -hmm. um, there's a business account and there's also a creator account which is slightly different to a business account um, and it's aimed at the influencers out there that are creating content so, uh-huh. yeah, there's a few different types. And unfortunately, um, some accounts do have different features. Right. So I think if you have a business account, you'll find that you don't have music in your stories, so you can't add. That explains a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the thought behind that, that I haven't been able to find the information anywhere, but from what I've uh, researched, it's because it's business and copyright laws. Okay. But you can have it, like you would have it on a, con- oh, sorry, on a um, creator yes. account. Yeah. Yes. Damn, I think I create stuff too. <laughs> no, but okay, that makes sense. Yeah. That's really interesting because I didn't realise there was that third one. Okay. Yes. Yes. Everyone else so. is going to get with the program first. <laughs> no. Okay. And then some people will be able to um, share to stories. Yeah. So straight from their profile, they can click the yes. little plane and it goes... Yes, mm-hmm. whereas some people can't. So I actually can't from my in-between desserts account. 
How strange, because I, I love that new feature. It's great when it works. Yeah, I really, really like it. Listeners, if you're not sure what we're talking about, when you go on Instagram, there's this little arrow, isn't there? Sort of yeah. where the, the heart like a light. Plane. Yeah, and you can click that. And it puts you it puts your latest posts into stories and helps draw people back to your stories. I really am getting a little bit addicted with that one recently. So, But how weird that you then can't have that on your Just Desserts. Just yes. Desserts, sorry, yeah. In between. In between desserts. I'm like, that doesn't sound right. Okay. One thing I want to other, one of the other things I want to pick up on what you just said is, you know, it makes complete sense that there are these key kind of influences in your industry that you look to. I love talking about productivity. I'm going to come back to that later on. But do you make it, do you have some structure in your day whereby you make sure that you look at those emails or feeds first? Or is it just kind of organic through your day? I'm just wondering if something's breaking, how you're making sure that you're on top of that. Because, you know, I followed you for a while. You were on top of stuff before I'm seeing it from anyone else that I'm following. So do you have a way that you manage your day to get on top of that stuff first? Yeah. So I've been working on a schedule. So it's taken a long time to get to my planning. Yeah. I've been doing it for everyone else, but I finally got into <laughs> time blocking and it's the best thing ever. Yes. Um, I'm using Asana to track all my tasks. Okay. And then I put it all into the calendar and plan my week out. So I've got my socials. So I look at them after school drop off. Yep. And just if there's anything breaking that I need to like follow up. Um, And then I'll also look at sort of the social aspect in the evening as well. Generally after the kids have gone to bed. Yeah. And just spend 15 minutes having a quick look through everything and making sure there's nothing urgent that I need to start researching or getting on top of. Yeah. which happened the other week, actually. I don't know if you've heard the creative, the Creator Studio, um, which is a Facebook feature. Mm-hmm. Um, you can connect your Facebook page to that and schedule and keep all your content in there and plan your oh, posts out in there. I see something come up about that. Yes. Wow, well, that's Instagram awesome. has actually been added to that. Okay. And I actually got the feature today where I can now create content for Instagram and post it and schedule it straight on my desktop through creator studio. Game changer. (laughs) How awesome is that? Because I love scheduling my social media, but Instagram's always been an issue for me. Like I really have hated that you can't schedule it and I do everything on the fly with Instagram, which is the opposite to Facebook. Yes. So that is awesome news. Thank you. So you're up to, and I love the fact that you talked about Asana, also that you have this blocking. I'm a massive blocking and batching fan. Just want to ask you as we're on this, given the nature of your business, are you logged into social media all of the time or do you, yeah, you've kind of (laughs) got to be, haven't you? So how do you manage distractions? Do you, do you, can you get blinkers on and just focus on client work or do you find that you're regularly distracted by everything else that's coming in? No, if I've got a like if I've got a job that needs to be done then that's an hour or 25 minutes whatever yeah. it is like I'll have the block and that's what I do and then five minutes I might quickly just see if anything's popped up yeah but generally it's like I try and keep focused on the the task and get that done that's awesome the ultimate discipline when you know social media is such a distraction and a costly distraction for so many businesses and yet in the business that you're in you can't log out of it because you need to be in it all the time so that shows great willpower and good structure to be able to shut off from those notifications when you actually need to be in it anyway so i'm sure that's giving lots of people food for (laughs) don't have that excuse and we're still doing it right okay now let's talk about competition you're in an industry just like me where there are so there's so much competition out there. There are so many social media managers. I think it's a, I don't know, I'd love to get your thoughts on this, but I reckon it's an industry that people think they can do easily because they are on social media. So why, you know, surely they can be a social media manager. It's very, you know, exciting and fun and seems a quick way to make a buck. I reckon there's a fair few people that get into your industry doing that. Um, Do you think that's fair to say or have I just been really, really brutally awful? (laughs) No, I think there's quite a few out there that uh, social media managers and they manage social media. That is what they do. They create posts and they post them. Yeah. Yeah. So you've managed, so with all that competition and it's like any industry, there'll be the good, the bad and the ugly and, you know, and the amazing as well. How have you managed to stand the test of time and make it to three years in a competitive market when many others haven't? And 
how have you stood out from the crowd and created that longevity? So I think at the start, I probably was one of those social media managers where oh I was... God, I've just been really insulted no, no, you, haven't I? No, no, not at all. Because I, <laughs> I realised, so I was creating content um, and it was mainly for the hospitality industry. So cafes um, and they were, it's busy. Coming from the hospitality background, I realised how it worked. Yeah. And it's a fast paced environment. You don't have time to stop and post and answer all the questions. Mm-hmm. But that also makes it really hard to um, run multiple social media accounts for different cafes because you don't know all the ins and outs and what's happening on the day and if they have, you know, vacancies. Yeah. So you would get inquiries can I book a table? Well, it's not as simple as like the, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> the cafe manager pulling out their phone and checking because it would come via you. So I realized that I needed to obviously branch out a little bit and to do that, I needed to get some more skills under my belt. So I just kept absorbing information, did a few courses. um, And then I started playing with Facebook um, Mm -hmm. just to see how that worked. And yes, listening to podcasts. I do like to listen to a podcast when I'm driving. Excellent answer. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, yeah, I just started listening to different um, different podcasts. Um, Amy Porterfield, Rick Mulready. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> love them both. Yeah, just taking all the information in, and yeah, realized that I just needed to get some more skills and more knowledge. So after a few different courses, um, I feel that instead of just creating a post and posting it, I now offer the strategy and the reason behind it, and using it as part of your marketing plan, not just having a social media account and hoping that by posting something, you'll get people liking your post, actually having a plan about it. Yeah, because the strategy part is so important. Otherwise, you're just whacking stuff up because you think you've got to post two or three times a day. There's no purpose behind it. Then people will come to me and say, you know, I'll ask them about their marketing. And they'll say they've got social media accounts, but they're not getting much traction and engagements because the stuff they're posting up has no strategy or thought behind yeah. it. Um, I want to just ask you quickly, I'm going very left of every question that I said I would ask you, but um, <laughs> you sound like you've got a thirst for learning. You sound like you regularly upskill is that something that's important to you do you have any plan around that I'm just keen to get your thoughts um no no real plan I just knew that I wanted to be able to um cover all my bases with what I was um doing yeah and now what I'm sharing so I just wanted to have sort of the most up-to-date knowledge and be able to to answer questions that people have so I just wanted to get in there and know how it works I do like um the reasoning behind things. So if I don't know why it doesn't work, <laughs> then yeah, I had to find out. So. Yeah, exactly. And I'm thinking with your industry, you know, you need to be aware of the changes. You need to be aware of when you can learn from an email that's come out from an influencer versus where you need to go on a course. Um, and you, I think it's personally very important to invest in ourselves um, and as business owners and to be upskilling regularly so that when we're working with our clients, we're bringing up to date, you know, for you up to date technology and knowledge to them and not just relying on old outdated stuff and having the gift of the gab to get clients on board. That just doesn't cut it, right? (laughs) All right. So I would love to dig into social media mistakes. We love talking about problems. (laughs) on this podcast, what are the biggest mistakes you see small business owners make when it comes to social media? Well, I may have just covered this off in what I was saying before, but yeah, just posting, (laughs) yeah, yeah, posting without a strategy. So just creating a post, putting it up and then, and then hoping that people will see it, hoping that people will um, read it, not having like on Instagram, not having hashtags on Facebook, using hashtags because you don't want to be using hashtags on Facebook. Yeah, let's talk about this then, right? <laughs> because I remember going to a course years ago and that we were told to put hashtags on Facebook. So I started doing it and someone else told me not to. So I stopped doing it. Now I still see some people do it, but I know that you shouldn't. So can you just confirm categorically why we shouldn't? Do they, do they work at all? Tell me more. No. So if you use a hashtag on Facebook, it's basically indicating to Facebook that your account is a business because businesses are more likely to use hashtags. 
Uh-huh. And by doing that, Facebook will lower the reach of your post. Oh, there's been loads of people <laughs> face planting like right now, palm pond, whatever it's called, going, oh my God, why did I do that? So on that note then, when people automatically post from Instagram to Facebook and they put their hashtags in their, the bulk of their post, they're really doing themselves a disservice there, aren't they? Because it's coming up on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. It looks yeah. ugly to start with. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So hopefully there's a whole load of people that have just gone, thank goodness you mentioned that. I'm going to stop doing that. All right. And on that note, let's just you know, dish a little deeper. Dish, I've not got my phrasing right today. I'm clearly struggling. <laughs> dish a little deeper is now a fey phrase. Okay. <laughs> um, hashtags. Should they be in the first comment of your post on Instagram? Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Is what I have found. Mm-hmm. But it comes back to testing it. So test it and see what works for you. Um, okay. I put them in my caption. Right. I'm going to test that then. Thank <laughs> you. Good. You know, you just get into old habits and ways of yeah. doing things. And I hadn't even questioned that until this conversation. <laughs> thought, okay. Probably should check on that, but it's good to know. It doesn't matter, but work out what works best for you. Yes. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Any other mistakes, any other big bloopers that you see come up regularly? Oh, um, off the top of my head, no. <laughs> You'll probably go away from this. And, oh yeah. my God, there's like 15 others that I'm so fed up clients do and that's why they're working with me. So let us know. Just jump into the Busy Business Women Facebook group. I would love all your bloopers, Amy. You can leave client <laughs> names out. Okay. Now let's talk stories versus posts, okay? I'd love to get your thoughts on what we should be using in stories on Instagram and Facebook versus posts if there's confusion for anyone out there and I say like confusion I mean I don't know what if there's a rule of thumb I just whack stuff in either place and hope for the best (laughs) there is some strategy there but I'd love to know if there's kind of a a theory behind it yeah so stories are the posts that disappear after 24 hours yeah uh, just in case people weren't sure and I think behind the scenes sort of um, getting to know you stuff is what's really good in them. So you could post what you're working on. Um, I'm going to be posting about being on this afterwards. Excellent. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So just sharing like a bit about you, a bit about the business, how you can help people, um, how you can work, like people can work with you. Yeah. Um, Having sort of that all encompassed package in stories and then you can save some of it in highlights. Yes, I yes. love the highlights as so, well. Yeah, so stories are um, all about being engaged, like engaging your audience in a quick way. Mm. Um, and that basically Instagram and Facebook, they do have different options. But I, at the moment, I'm using stories on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, and just the tools and the stickers that they give you in Instagram are great to engage with your audience and have that interaction and have some fun with it. Yeah, I think that's why I love it. It is really fun. Yeah. And, you know, I talk a lot about, for those of you that have seen my post about being ugly, like basically I prefer that word to being authentic, but it's about being really true to who you are and just not trying to be what everyone else is out there in your space. Um, and I, I feel like Instagram stories and Facebook stories really allow me to do that very easily. So you can pop up stuff about your dog and, your, you know, it's not necessarily really irrelevant stuff, but things that people can get a real insight into who you are. Yeah. And that works brilliantly for my business because I want people to really engage with me and know who I am. It's not just the logo, it's the person behind it. So I love uh, stories and I, I agree with you in terms of Instagram stories. It just seem to be way better than Facebook stories. I really love the stuff that's in there. You can make things look very pretty and fun. Lots of engagement as well. Yes, but I'd say watch this space because I'm pretty sure Facebook <gasps> will <laughs> Facebook will um, start working on their stories. I was groaning because I thought you were about to tell me they're going to change it all and just oh, as I've no, got used to I'm it. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I was hoping that they would step up and make their yeah. stories as good as Instagram. So fingers crossed. Yeah. Now, for our listeners who are maybe listening to this and thinking, I'd really like to get my head around stories, in particular Instagram stories and you know how you can use that effectively in your business, uh, which would be a really great, a really smart move for everyone because... of Instagram users watch stories daily, I've heard, Amy, which is a staggering number, right? 
it's, I mean, I love sitting there just watching stories and flickering through everyone. So the good news is that Amy is going to be running a Shine Masterclass for us this month. And she's going to talk us through how to sweeten your Instagram stories. So during the masterclass, she's going to share with us why you should be using stories in your marketing, the different types of stories that you can create in Instagram and how to use the tools Instagram gives you to create really good engagement along with a whole heap of other things. So if you are sitting there and thinking you'd like to join us for this masterclass, or get your hands on the recording, just head over to the show notes, which is busybusinesswomen.biz forward slash podcast 42. Click on the link to shine, get registered, and we look forward to welcoming you into the tribe and for you coming on to the masterclass with Amy, which I can't wait for. So thank you for saying yes to that, because as I always say, these masterclasses are often self-serving and I can't wait (laughs) to learn a bucket load about stories and make mine pop even more. Okay, so let's get stuck into productivity. I said I'd come back to this later on. I absolutely will, because you know it's my jam. It's a thing I love. Now, I know you have many balls to juggle. How many kids have you? got i've got two two yes seven-year-old right more than enough balls to juggle so (laughs) uh you know you've got a business you've got two kids family life got a whole load of things ticking along right i'd love to know what tips and tactics um that you use to help you be as productive as possible and basically to keep your sanity when you're doing all of that yeah um so they both start well they're both at school as of this year. Yes. <laughs> How good does that feel? <laughs> so this year has been the um, the year that I was determined to put systems and processes in place to hopefully scale, yes. um, doing reasonably well. So I thought this is it. Great. And I suppose to do that, I needed to work out how to plan all my days out. So as I said before, Asana has mm-hmm. been um, amazing. Um, I sat down with Leanne from Virtual Infinity and she sort of helped me out with some strategy around the the time blocking and time management. I think, Great. Um, yeah, time was probably my biggest thing. Yeah. And over the last couple of years, just running in and out with school and kinder drop off and trying to fit client work in amongst that. Yeah. Um, I've obviously been able to take on more client work this year and I just needed to work out a way to schedule that in. So yeah, I'm, fairly new to time blocking, but I'm loving it. And it definitely gives me a a view of the week ahead and yeah, what I can do. I feel like I, and I totally agree with you because I just, I don't function anywhere near the degree to what I can at my best. If I haven't planned my day the night before and blocked time out, and I'm not clear on what I'm doing. And also because I'm a morning person, I start my day really productively as a result. I think otherwise it's very easy to find that you get to lunchtime. You haven't really got much done because you didn't think about what you were doing beforehand. And when you are working to school hours in particular, your day's already short enough. You just don't, you know, you can't afford to lose hours in the day just because you weren't planning. So for you, it's really about having that structure, using Asana, blocking time out and yeah. being very rig- regimented about that. Yeah. And when I say I'm blocking time, I'm blocking time for everything. I have family yeah. stuff in there. I have who's going where, the kids activities and then work, like work hours, the jobs that I'm working on within that time. Yeah. Same. Yeah. So all of our listeners <laughs> might be wondering how the hell to get all of their stuff done. If you're not already, make sure you're planning the night before. You you don't even need to use something like Asana, but I know um, you know you're a big fan. A lots of people are. It's an amazing tool. But even just using your diary, blocking time in your diary. And you know, if you look at mine, everything's color coded, and you can see when it's personal stuff, work stuff, client stuff. You know all different categories. But having it blocked in your diary and knowing what you're doing and when can make such an enormous difference to your productivity, right? Yeah, it's amazing. (laughs) Yeah, cool. I'm glad you're reinforcing one of my favorite topics. Thank you for that. All right. So before I need to love and leave you, and I could chat for hours, but I'm very grateful that we've got the masterclass to look forward to. So we've still got more Amy time coming up. Is there a quote or a mantra, because I love to ask this at the end of every podcast, that's really inspired you over the years that you can share with us and maybe tell us a bit about the impact that it's had on you? Yep. So um, I was thinking about um, quotes. I have a few that are in my um, courses, so my online workshops, but it really came down to done is better than perfect. Yes. 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 (laughs) Love that. Um, And that pretty much sums up everything over the last 12 months Mm. that I had this real 
um, mindset shift and I just got it done and I didn't relook at it. I just, it was done and I sent it out there. Yes. So I can't more. <laughs> progress over perfection every time. Right. Yeah. Like I think so many people hold themselves back from trying, you know, I'm a reformed perfectionist. So I speak from personal yeah. experience. <laughs> hold themselves back from trying to get the thing right. So it in some cases never goes out. And how much better is it, you know, in terms of bigger vision impact in the world, if you get your thing out at 80% or even 70% than never getting it out at all. You know, the ripple effect of that done versus perfection is way bigger than perfection because perfection often doesn't, well, it doesn't exist to start with. And that standard that we're trying to aim for generally doesn't get put out there anyway. So I love you and me, you know, we just <laughs> love a good productivity chat. <laughs> Thank you. I really, really love that. Um, great ending to uh, your podcast and just all things productivity. So thank you, Amy. Okay. Now, if uh, listeners, if you would like to get in contact with Amy and follow the fabulous work that she's doing, all of her details are conveniently in the show notes for you. So you just need to go to busybusinesswomen.biz forward slash podcast 42. You can also find Amy at sugarpopsocial.com.au. Facebook, she's at sugarpopsocial and Instagram is sugarpopsocial. We'll also have links to her foodies um, Instagram page and also her Facebook group in the show notes. So just head over there, click on everything and you can just absorb the world of Amy. Um, also, you've got a fabulous freebie which I think everybody needs to go and grab. It's called the Ultimate Instagram Starter Guide. And it's all about getting your Instagram on track with a nice little freebie that's going to, uh, it's jam-packed full of tips, examples, and a checklist to help make your social media uh, pop. So again, I will put the link in the show notes and you can just go and click on that and download Amy's freebie, Ultimate Instagram Starter Guide. Sounds awesome. Thank you for doing that. So Amy, any parting words or anything you want to say before we let you go? Um, thank you for having me. Oh, pleasure. It's been great to chat to you and yeah, make sure that you plan your Instagram and your Facebook and your socials into your marketing strategy and yeah, make it pop. I love it. I love that you got pop in there. Your socials are beautiful. The pop word works really well. Like it's great branding, great marketing. I love all that you do. And I'm super stoked that you said yes to this. So thank you so much for coming on and giving us your time and sharing your expertise. And also can't wait for the Shine Masterclass. So thanks heaps, Amy. Really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. So listeners, if you've enjoyed this episode, I would love you to leave us a little review on iTunes, pretty please, and let us know what you loved about what Amy shared with us today. And if you'd like to hang out some more with me, I'd love to see you over on Facebook and Instagram. I'm at Busy Business Women, and you can find lots of biz building goodness over on my website at busybusinesswomen.biz. So thank you so much for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. It's great to be back after a little break. I will be back again very, very soon with more inspiration to help you build a business that booms. But until the next time, I'm, Fa I'm Faye Hollands and you've been listening to Amy Wyhoon from Sugar Pop Social on the Busy Businesswomen podcast.